Good evening and welcome to the August 11th, 2021 uh, work session of the Town Board. Uh, welcome to everyone uh, that is here in the auditorium this evening. Uh, I'll officially call this uh, meeting to order. And I'll ask that everyone please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And I'll ask our clerk uh, and deputy town clerk uh, to please call the roll. Draw. Here. Call. Here. Lafayette. Here. Moore. Here. Akinden. Here. All present. Great. Thank you. Um, we have uh, the uh, July 28th, 2021 minutes before us and would entertain a motion of approval for those minutes. I'll move those, Mr. Supervisor. Second. Moved by uh, Councilperson Draw, seconded by Councilperson Ockenden. Are there any questions, comments, changes, or updates to those minutes? Seeing none, uh, I would ask for a roll call vote of approval, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. LaFountain. Aye. Moore. Aye. Ockenden. Aye. Five ayes. Thank you very much. Uh, monthly reports. It is that uh, time of the month. Uh, most of our uh, monthly reports are in. Thank you to the department heads that have got them in, to those couple that uh, have not uh, submitted those. Uh, we'd anticipate that they'll be in by the end of the week. Uh, thank you in advance for that. Uh, this evening, we do not have any public hearings. We do have a number of guests. And uh, so we'll start uh, with uh, our first guest. Uh, this is Mike De Niro requesting a streamlined approval of, to refurbish a garage at 1801 Penfield Road to allow a physical rehab room. And I'll ask Mr. Costello to, uh, to further tee that up uh, for the board. Thank you very much. Um, as you may recall, the board did grant an approval for 1801 Penfield Road a few months ago to allow a chiropractor office within the main structure, um, which uh, was approved. And uh, Mr. De Niro uh, is getting ready to start doing some work on the property. One of the things that is coming to play is the fact that there's an existing old garage on the site um, I'm going to bring up a couple of photos of that old garage. <clears throat> and uh, what he would like to do is, and I'm going to let him explain in more detail, but um, I'm sorry. Uh, what he would like to do is he would like to refurbish this old garage and convert it into a, um, a rehab uh, training center like a gym to uh, get people to get some rehab uh, out of the building. Um, I have that. I have some of the work that needs to be done on the interior. You can see the footers are in bad shape. The rafters are in bad shape. <laughs> oh. There's some uh, graffiti, graffiti on the wall now. Um, and you can see some of the moss growing on the roof. And with that, Mike, I'll let you jump in and talk a little bit about what exactly you'd like to do on that, with that building. Well, um, the building is a real gem in my eyes. <laughs> um, I would like to strip the building of the roofing and siding, uh, lift the building off the uh, current non-foundation, uh, put one or two courses of block, set the building back down in place, um, tear out the existing uh, concrete inside. Um, those doors would, those garage doors would be removed and um, a new wall would be built with an entry door. Um, the electric that's run to the building would be disconnected before we do any of that. Um, basically, um, turn it into a usable space for physical therapy. Um, the building would have um, electric uh, heating and cooling, um, one man door. Um, I'm not sure about windows yet, um, but I'm hoping that once we strip the building, um, the existing frame will be sound enough and not so not too distorted so that we can lift it and reuse it. Um, I'd like to um, use existing buildings, um, rehab them in their uh, 
original from their original state to an update. Uh, this building will probably end up getting insulated with um, possibly an R20 underneath the slab, um, foam insulation in the walls and in the ceiling. One of the concerns we have right now, we're not sure, we do need some height because of the equipment that would go into this building. But um, I think we could um, get the height from the existing structure. Um, it's, it was a real plus to see that there was electric run to the building. Um, I was prepared to dig a new trench um, to the building so that we would have the electric we need. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if, if uh, what, what is out there is sufficient to do everything that we need done, but um, if we have to run new electric, a new electric line for um, um, the building, then we'll end up doing that. I'll probably run it right across the driveway because the, the uh, parking driveway area needs to be repaved anyway. Um, that's about it. Any questions? Mike, uh, what are your thoughts uh, as to when you'd like to start this work? Well, we just hired um, an asbestos abatement company for the main building. So once that's finished, then we're going to come in with a crew to do whatever demolition needs to be done on the main building. And at that time, I would like to do whatever demolition we're going to uh, do on the garage. So um, abatement is supposed to take um, a week and a half. I'm going to say two weeks just to be safe. So that'll put us into the um, middle of September. And then demolition, a week or two for demolition. Um, so the middle of September is, <clears throat> is uh, what I'm forecasting. And uh, once uh, once you do the work, um, uh, when would uh, your hopes be to open the facility up? I, I don't I don't know. It, it, I think it's difficult to say. Um, it's it's probably a six to eight month project. Um, so the, we're so, probably, we're, so we're probably looking at a March April. Uh, time frame to, to open the business. Okay. And um, could you, um, you know, it's indicated as a physical rehab room, but uh, could you give a little bit more detail about uh, what your thoughts, what your plans, type of equipment that uh, you plan on having at that location? Um, I wish I, I wish I had the model numbers and that kind of information for you. Um, you may or may not know that my son is the chiropractor right and um, he has identified um, not weightlifting equipment in the old sense where you have barbells and that kind of thing it would actually be something that would be um, installed up against the wall kind of like a universal gym mm -hmm. for those of us who are old enough to know what that means um, that kind of equipment um, and then Obviously, the floor would have some kind of padded flooring, but um, I don't think there'd be, um, I, mean, I mean, there might be a treadmill or a bike along with the um, weight lifting apparatus. Um, so that's, that's about all I know right at, at this point. Okay. All right. Board uh, questions for Mike. Mike, I just have one question. I see that yeah, I like the idea that you're that you're going to refab the um, older buildings and so forth. I guess my question, only question to you, is if you get in there to get in there and find out it's too much to do this, um, do you have a plan B um, for the building or for what you'd like to see um, there? If that if that um, happens, if we get into it and it doesn't look like it's um, feasible because of the structure um, or cost, I would uh, get back in touch with, uh, with Mr. Costello and uh, give him an update and then 
um, uh, follow whatever direction the town has for me to follow. Great, great, thank you. All right. And uh, a reminder, what Mike is asking for is a streamline uh, review by the board uh, to take an existing uh, facility and uh, basically rehab and uh, turn it into a, uh, a center for uh, his son, who's a chiropractor, uh, for different equipment. So uh, looking as a streamline as opposed to a formal public hearing. I'll ask other, other questions <coughs> board, uh, for, for Mike, for the applicant at this point. Mr. Costello. Thank you. Uh, Mike, just, just for clarification, the, the, the actual function of this, this uh, rehab is, is in conjunction with your son's business and not another business, correct? That's correct. So the people that would be utilizing this site are basically his patients? That's correct. And it's not for the general public, per se? No, it isn't. OK. All right. Thank you, Mr. Costello. All right, um, uh, board, uh, any last minute questions or anything at this point? I'll ask uh, staff um, any additional questions or comments that uh, you would like uh, to be added to the record that uh, we haven't already discussed this evening, either uh, at uh, this meeting or the materials that were submitted to us. Uh, just one question, will there be any signage associated with this facility, Mike? I, I, not that I, I don't think so. Not on this particular building. Um, whatever um, use will come of uh, this building will be from the, the patients inside. And so it will just be part of that, um, I'll call it menu, that the uh, chiropractor um, has for his patients. Thank you. Okay. Board. Um, uh, are you uh, interested in moving forward uh, streamlining process? Yes. And if so, uh, is there a motion uh, for that? Mr. Supervisor, I'd make a motion to move forward in, um, in letting go ahead and, and refab this building. And I'll second that, Mr. Supervisor. It's a great opportunity to refurbish that, uh, that old structure. Okay. Uh, been moved by Councilperson Dross, seconded by Council. Person Ockenden, uh, any specific items above and beyond what I would call the normal uh, required items uh, within the Four Corners District, you know, which would include obviously uh, any permits that uh, would be necessary, uh, inspections review by building officials, fire marshal, and uh, any other uh, comments uh, that uh, you would like to see added uh, to this approval. Okay. Mr. Costello, uh, do you have what you need uh, for uh, preparing a letter back to the applicant? I do, thank you. All right, uh, thank you. So there's a motion on the table and a second. Uh, I would ask for a roll call vote of approval of this matter. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. LaFountain. Aye. Moore. Aye. Ockenden. Aye. Bye byes. Thank you. Mike, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, be well, be safe. Thank you. Have All a good right. night. We'll move on to uh, item B, under guests. Uh, Steve Biker uh, for a discussion regarding potential building designs uh, for a proposed dance studio at 1345 Empire <laughs> Boulevard. And uh, again, with that, Steve, welcome. Great to Thank see you, you again. You too. And uh, I would ask Mr. Costello <clears throat> for uh, some further comments uh, on this matter for the board. Just to give you some background, I'm trying to get to his property, which we will do in a moment. Um, Steve has come to me and requested that that he'd be interested possibly in developing a dance studio on the site that has been sitting on the front of his property for several years now. And a dance studio would be a conditionally permitted use within the limited or the LaSalle's Landing District. It's this property here. As you can see, the apartment complex is across the street to the bay. Um, he's been looking at this property to do that. Uh, prior to moving forward with an application to you, he had asked me if what the board's thoughts would be on the type of architectural details that might be necessary and I did indicate that the board has been somewhat stringent over the years to make sure architecture is maintained along the new stretches of development on Empire Boulevard. He then submitted some drawings to show you uh, to get your feel for it uh, and I and Steve I'm going to let you talk a little bit more in detail but I think the key of this is it's going to be a cost issue for you if uh, it gets too extravagant and you're looking to do something there that tries to make the board and yourself happy. Yes. So, so do you have those um, I examples do. that I yep. sent you? Here's the first one. So 
basically what we're trying to do is come up with a cost effective business or building for the studio. Um, so the pole barn idea that I had would be the most cost effective and it would make the most sense versus us just doing something else elsewhere on the property. But I want to utilize this lot because it's just sitting there vacant. Um, so I've, we, we've been driving around, looking around online for some things that are visually appealing and just wanted to see if we added some of these features to the building, if this would be acceptable to look into and proceed with. Okay. Ward, uh, any initial uh, thoughts or comments uh, from Steve? Steve, just a question. That parcel, as I'm trying to look at it, is it sit down off Empire, the piece that you're looking at? Is it? I was not trying to get that back for you. It's at road level. It is, okay. Yes. Yeah, it's at grade. So, so the rest of the property drops down, but that is up. So it would be level. right up, it would be close to the frontage of yes. Empire Boulevard. Yeah, there's a, so there's a big uh, swale that runs across the front of the property. Um, and that's probably, I would guess, 40 feet, maybe 50. So the, and then the building would be kind of tucked towards the back corner of the lot. So it would be probably 75 feet from the road. Okay. So Steve, what, um, what, what are you thinking about uh, by way of uh, square footage of the building? So the- give, To give us a sense. Uh, so for, approximately 3,600 square feet give or take um, we were thinking 60 by 60 but we might do something more um, more like 80 by 40 depending on how floor layout goes mr. Costello would uh, you remind the board what the last discussion uh, on this particular site uh, might have been for development that's a good question mr. LeBon. <laughs> I'm quite sure I remember there have been so many offerings lately. Well, I figured I'd ask the town historian. <laughs> I wish you were here tonight to answer that question. Uh, Steve's come in with several things. Um, unfortunately, many of them that he and I have talked about do not meet the criteria for a per permitted use within the district, but this is the first one, I think. I think the last one you talked about was possibly Bay Creek Paddling, possibly looking at this site as, yes. a, as a secondary site as well. But this is really the first uh, first proposal he's had that meets the criteria for a conditionally permitted use within the district. Okay. All right. Thank you. And just a side note, if you remember the uh, last month we had talked to uh, Harris Funeral Home about on the that parcel of next door. on mm -hmm. the adjacent parcel. Mm -hmm. Right. So that, that's not going to occur now, but it gives you a reference point as to where Steve is. And Steve, uh, is it uh, that site that also has the uh, hot box uh, on that uh, site or within the right of way? Yes. Yep. You can see the hot box in the front right corner there. To the right one. To the right. And Down. The... Oh, here it is. I'm yep. sorry. Yeah. Right yeah. Yep. Okay. So it's actually on on your property, not the right of way. Correct. Yep. Okay. Okay, so board, uh, the question is uh, style for LaSalle's Landing. Um, does it fit the character of what uh, the board has been looking at? Um, you know, we've been historically looking at some nautical uh, type of themes. Yeah. Um, thoughts about uh, what uh, is being proposed? I think it looks nice. I think it fits in for the style. <laughs> I think the idea of having the overhead doors probably detracts from the actual building uh, if you were to do something like this mm. it'd be more of an office or more of a studio type operation than a construction type building yeah there will be one overhead door a small one probably on the back side just for um, any shipments they get costumes and props and things like that but that'll be a small a small area I don't want to get uh, too too deep into this because um, you're asking us for our thoughts and views about uh, the aesthetics of the, the building. 
but with a an approximate 3,600 square foot building, uh, what are you looking at by way of uh, number of people that uh, might be there at one time, which then would lead to amount of parking that you might need uh, for that site? So, at the maximum amount of people in and out is approximately 24 students, but they are drop off only, and then and then the uh, staff, which is about, what would you say? Four-ish per day. Four per day. Four per day. We'll, 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 let, the, we'll let the record reflect uh, that is the better half of this corporation uh, that addressed the board, right? <laughs> yes. Right answer, Steve, as a, as a newlywed is yes, that is correct. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> Very good. All right. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so about uh, 24 students, uh, about uh, approximately four instructors uh, that might be that might make up a class, uh, and you might have multiple classes during the course of the day. And I'll look past you, and you may have multiple classes per day. Yes. So our max student amount. So if you wouldn't mind, if you would come right up for the record, that would be great. Uh, thank you. You can sit next to him or you can grab that uh, mic right there. That would be perfect. Thank you. All right. So the max amount of students per room is 12 per room. So we figure we go about 24 children. It's drop off only. Um, the staff, there's about four <coughs> staff. We only run from 3.30 to 9 o'clock on Monday through Friday. And Saturday is only 9 to 12. And we run September to the end of May. So the in the summer, we only run a couple days, um, Tuesdays and Wednesdays this year. And we have about 20 students, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, nights for two hours. Where, where are you currently? Uh, Winton Road North. Is this a secondary or are you talking I'm about looking moving to move. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Tony, you were talking about aesthetics of the building. Yep. It, you know, I'm certainly not going to speak for the entire board, but for myself, I think photo one and photo three are by far the better looking photos. I, I prefer one. I think one has a very nice, positive design to it. The light blue color? Yeah, not that one, Jim. The more nautical looking. There. Yeah, that one. Yeah. That's pretty. Okay. Other thoughts, board? Did you, do you guys have a preference to what one of these buildings you showed us? Um, so my personal favorite was oh um, <laughs> the darker one, but I just like darker colors in general. Um, that was my second. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever whatever the town wants to see to make it happen, we could work with. Well, I, I, I'm, I, I think it's important that you as the owner and the investor in it have a little bit of say of what you want to see. So that would be nice. You know, I, I, I respect that and I certainly put that under consideration in final decisions. Um, whether it's one or whether it's two, uh, you know, again, I, I, I'm flexible. I, I prefer one, but if you went with two, that's fine too. And these were all mainly just just examples of features to see if these right. kind of features would be acceptable to do a pole barn. And then we'd still have to come up with an actual what the building's going to look like. Right. Design. Sure. Right. Sure. I think I think a couple of things um, that uh, the board might be looking for is uh, one uh, having an, an overhead door for deliveries and things like that understand the importance of that having that on the back side uh, seems to make the most and the best sense uh, from an overall aesthetics uh, standpoint uh, at the end of the day um, i i think that uh, the a uh, couple of the examples again not getting into the color because my wife tells me that i'm pretty much colorblind uh, and don't go down that path that um, you know the color i think as uh, mr moore had indicated uh, the color of the exterior, uh, the stonework, and uh, things like that certainly is something that, uh, you know, you need to be uh, comfortable with. 
and I think what you're looking for right now is just a general sense from the board is that uh, is that uh, acceptable with what you're thinking about uh, for the design uh, of that again recognizing that you're going to personalize it uh, to what works best uh, uh, for you yes all right board uh, other other comments or direction recognizing that uh, the applicants will need to come back uh, to the board for a more formal formal process but uh, uh, any additional comments that you'd like to give or share with them as the, they look to lay this out nope. no other than we appreciate you looking to move the business into Penfield yeah, so. so I'm sure you had plenty of choices and we're excited when people want to move their business into Penfield so thank you for the consideration Thank All right. Before we leave, uh, Mr. Costello, I'll ask, uh, is there anything that uh, you would like to see added to the record that uh, wasn't submitted by way of photos or discussed here this evening? I think the things we've got to look at, if you're amenable to this type of a design, is to sit down with the site plan issues and make sure there's adequate parking, not only for this business, but sure. for future businesses that may be there. So it might be an issue of talking about maybe land banking, parking, that type of thing. But we'll okay. work that out as we move forward. Okay. So at this point, I, what I would say is uh, work with Mr. Costello uh, as you move down the path uh, for, this, uh, for this plan. And uh, at some point, we'll look forward to a uh, formal hearing before the board. OK. All right. Thanks for your time. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank uh, you. Good luck. Be well, be safe. OK, we'll move on to item C. Uh, this is George Dermody. This is for a discussion regarding the installation of a foster home at uh, 1751 Penfield Road. And again, as uh, I think we have him online or on Zoom, uh, welcome, uh, George. As uh, you're adjusting everything on that end, uh, I'll ask Mr. Costello uh, to give us uh, just a, a little bit more of an update before he turns the reins over to you. I met Thank George uh, several weeks ago who indicated that he'd be interested in uh, purchasing a home on Penfield Road, which was formerly the Sentner home at 1751 Penfield Road. Uh, for the last 10 or 12 years, it has been uh, uh, Bosch Nickerson uh, intellectual property attorneys uh, running an operation out of there. They've, as the board knows, they've recently left and gone up the street. Um, he's walked through the site. I think you've walked through the site with the state uh, inspectors as well. Um, and why don't you tell the board a little bit about what you'd like to do on this site? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, can you hear me okay? We can. Welcome. Great. Great. Thank you very much. And by way of introduction, um, I'm the president and CEO of an organization called the Children's Home Wyoming Conference. Um, our, our base is, is in Binghamton, and we provide services throughout um, central New York. And um, as an organization of 110 years old, you know, we have a variety of services. We serve children and families um, of, all, of all ages. This uh, program and project is the result of a request for proposal that was put out by the Monroe County Department of Human Services. Um, it was competitive. I know that there were organizations within Monroe County and throughout the state that submitted proposals. And uh, my organization, the Children's Home, was awarded this proposal through Monroe County uh, based on, I think, a couple of factors. The fact that we have successfully operated a program of this design in Broome County, the Binghamton area, for over 30 years. Um, and we also had um, people from the Department of Human Services come and visit our program and tour it and talk about this is what we would like. So um, the program, in, in, a, in a nutshell, is um, licensed by the Office of Children and Family Services, okay? It's to meet all health and safety standards requirements, and it is a short-term program, a short-term group home to serve eight children between the ages of 10 and 17 exclusively from Monroe County to be children who are either awaiting a permanent foster home placement or for whom their current placement has been disrupted or they need to be removed from their home. 
the average length of stay is anticipated for each resident to be 30 to 45 days. Um, it is a, in as I said, a licensed program with intense staffing. Um, I often go to this point and talk to people of what it's not. It's not an alternative to detention. It's not a treatment program for sexual offenders or for drug and alcohol or anything like that. It is a always ready, safe place for, for children um, where they can be welcomed in. We can help stabilize and help build um, the next step in their life. Hopefully that is to return home to their family or um, if not, is to go into a permanent foster care setting. And what the reason for the, a program like this, that what is happening is certainly um, the research and all of, you know, the work is that we know that, that children do better when they're in a home-like setting. Um, institutional care is, is often difficult and, and, and traumatic for children and keeping children close to home, Monroe County children in Monroe County, um, keeps the bonds with their family, with their siblings, with their relatives, they can often stay in the same school. And so it's a great, a great way um, to support uh, and strengthen families in, in the community. So um, I've been through many properties uh, throughout Monroe County. I had the opportunity, you know, uh, to meet with Mr. Mr. Costello, talk about what we were trying to do, and certainly that this property um, with some interior modification certainly meets um, the requirements for what we need, would like to do. And I think that it, um, from my perspective and in operating quite a few residential programs um, in communities that the neighbor impact will be minimal. Um, I think we can be a good neighbor. And we also um, just think that it, it, it's nice in that we're in a, in a park-like setting, but we're also close um, to where the children and family may have originally come from. And I would just like to, to share with you, just to give you some the fun background, is that I realize that I'm coming to you as um, somewhat of an outsider. You know, I'm, I'm, our business isn't always located there. Um, by the way, of a little bit of background, a long, long time ago, I was a St. John Fisher graduate, um, you know, and um, grew up in the, in the area. And um, I, we have a contractual relationship, partnership with someone, with a gentleman by the name of John Trahey is helping me um, develop this program uh, with a long-standing positive reputation in Monroe County um, in human services. And I also realized today in my work that another, uh, we have a, an informal partnership and support with a, another Penfield resident, um, wonderful woman by the name of Karen Zandi, who operates the Mary Cariola Center. Those are colleagues of mine, professional friends of mine, who are certainly advising us um, on, on the development of this project. Okay, George, uh, thank, thank, thank you. Let's uh, see if there's any questions uh, by the board uh, at this point. Well, how, how many children at a time would be in the house? The maximum license capacity of the, would be eight. And how many staff? The, uh, there's minimum requirements, and then certainly we are above that. During the day, it, anytime it would be minimum of three, probably more to four to five. And that includes, not only does it include um, supervisors, what we call child care workers, it would include nursing staff, it would also include um, a mental health therapist and counselor. Um, the evening, the minimum requirement would be two awake night staff at, at all times. And that could be, as I said, the population will change. There could be many times where there are three or four children, but the license capacity um, would be eight. 
So do you have boys and girls in the house at the same yeah. time? Yes, it will be licensed. It's it's co-ed ages 10 to 17. With the, with the design um, of this home, there would be two single rooms and three double occupancy rooms. Okay. Oh, would you be doing anything to the backyard, um, playground or anything like that? I know it's beautiful um, going into the park it, in the back. It's beautiful going into the park. Um, I think, you know, we haven't really developed any plans in, in that area, whether there was a need for a, you know, a badminton net or, or certainly, you know, something like that. I think there's lots of great um, opportunities there. Obviously, it, I'm sure the kids would love a basketball hoop on the front of the garage if we could. Um, and just to work in that area, certainly a, a picnic table for, uh, for picnics and, and things of that nature. Um, our goal is to create a, and what we do is to create a safe, home-like environment um, and be a place where families can come, prospective foster families can come and interact with children in a much more natural um, environment. George, um, in a perfect world, uh, what are you looking at uh, by way of uh, uh, the start of operations? I would like to be between um, Thanksgiving and Christmas of this year. And uh, the amount the amount of uh, what I'll call remodeling or work that uh, you have to do, uh, give us uh, some sense, recognizing it went from a, a, a home to an office setting, now back to a home. Uh, what is uh, some of the things that uh, that you need to deal with? And I'm sure there are some state regulations as well. Yes, and, and the first and foremost, and um, as Mr. Costello said, we went through with the Office of Children and Family Services fire safety inspector, because if it doesn't meet um, his approval, then, then the project doesn't go anywhere. So um, we have work to do in the basement on the heating system. Uh, the requirement is to create and encapsulate the heating unit in a one hour rated room. Um, and we have met uh, with consultants uh, from, from Airquip came to meet with us and we have a plan on how to do that to meet the fire rating. The other significant uh, safety feature is we need to have a second means of egress from the second floor. Um, and the plan would be to create off the back of the building, not seen from the road, uh, with one, the window meets the requirement to build a uh, fire escape. And there are OCFS requirements and regulations as to the nature of that, comes out the window, has a platform, and then co go down. So those are the two main code safety issues that we need to address. And then as you, as you mentioned, the uh, home being an office, the kitchen would need to be remodeled uh, to turn it into a more uh, livable, usable family um, type kitchen. Um, beyond that, we would be looking, you know, for any type of um, asbestos abatement, um, lead paint um, abatement, um, providing, looking at a variety of things, and certainly want to make sure that the the home is. Uh, modernized and spruced up. Inside, it's, it's beautiful. It has some beautiful features to it. Great. Uh, Mr. Costello, could you put that uh, back up on the screen, the, the, sure the actual home yeah. uh, itself? Thank you very much. Board, as uh, Mr. Costello is uh, doing that, uh, additional questions for the applicant, uh, for George, uh, around this operation or was, proposed operation. I was curious about transportation. So if the children are um, still going to be in the schools they normally go to, do you have somebody, uh, a, a transit bus that takes them to other schools? Our, our staffing, um, usually with a program like this, we would have a six passenger minivan and then a, another, maybe a crossover vehicle, you know, to do that. And certainly our, our staff would be doing that. Um, you know, we don't have any signage on the vehicles no. or on the house or anything like that. We really try to, you know, create a, um, as, as 
best we can kind of a normalized existence during this kind of upsetting time, perhaps in a young person's life. Uh, so I'll, and I love one another, you know, wonderful thing about this is not only the setback from the road, but the ample parking that we would always be off the street. George, I, um, you pretty much just, I think, spoke to this, but um, kind of going on with what Linda referenced earlier, um, I assume you have no real concerns with the location. Um, Penfield Road, as we know, is extremely busy. <clears throat> you know, there is there is some setback there, but, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> um, just wondered if, you know, any measures that would need to be taken. I'm thinking of your the younger age kids in, in the group, you know, the eight-year-olds yeah. and being outside. I understand supervision and that, but uh, thinking about some homes here in town that, you know, that I've seen, there's always some kind of a barricade or something at the end of a driveway to try to keep the kids from going that far. Um, just wondered if you gave that any thought. Again, just being the Penfield Road is, you know, unfortunately a, a busy road. We, we, we certainly have, and I certainly would want to work with the town on what was, you know, aesthetically, you know, pleasing. And, and certainly want to start with anything would be just as, as you state, sort of that, you know, more barrier protection than any type of thing. So, I, you know, I, in my initial thoughts were if you look at the home, the picture that was up on the left-hand side, perhaps even with the front of the house, that would kind of help make a backyard area you know, kind of a side yard uh, where people could go. Um, we would probably also, you know, update uh, the, like an architectural style fence along the right side of the property. There are some places where the fence has um, come down. And, and, you know, we could certainly, in terms of, of playing and supervision, I guess my concern and my concern as a parent was, you know, a basketball bouncing down that driveway and some someone just running after it so maybe just even having something to stop if the kids right. are playing basketball we'll just roll this out to stop things coming down so certainly the um, safety and supervision is extremely important it's extremely important in the licensure of the project and um, we would take that as our highest priority thank you thank you Okay, other questions for it? No. Any additional information you'd like to see from the applicant uh, on this uh, proposal? I'll look to Mr. Uh, Costello for uh, some next steps uh, in this uh, process. Yes, um, in talking to George, I mean, this is kind of an, a different type of use for the Four Corners District, and I wasn't quite sure how to handle it. That's why I wanted to bring him in and give him some background as to where you were thinking about. And I know that probably you, Mr. Uh, uh, Horowitz, and I will be talking on Friday morning. I was really wondering if because of the situation with the group home, we've had many other group homes in, in Penfield that did not require public hearings. Right. Um, this would fall into that category, I assume, but by the same token, it is in the four corners. And I think it's going to have to be a, a judgment call on the board's part as to whether or not you determine it to be necessary to have a public hearing or if you want to do a streamlined process, uh, or if they even need an approval based on the type of use that it is under the state jurisdiction. So typically on a group home, in a group home setting, as uh, you and I have been through a number of times, uh, typically there is uh, the applicant or the prospective uh, owner of the facility would have a public information, not a formal public hearing, but a public information uh, to give uh, residents an opportunity to come out and uh, address the uh, address the applicant. Typically, uh, we do have town representation there uh, to answer any town uh, questions, uh, but uh, that, that is historically how we've handled that in the past. I know it's not uh, identical to uh, the, a group home as is defined in state law, uh, so I think um, having, having a review with uh, Mr. Horowitz uh, would be an appropriate uh, thing to do. And I know they are on a tight time schedule, and I don't want to drag it out any longer than we have to, but if we determine that they have to go to a public hearing, we would have to do that fairly quickly uh, to set a public hearing, which probably would have to happen as early as next week to get them into September so that we could go through that process in September and then give them the ability to do the work they need to do to get open by Christmas or Got it. when they're trying. So could we make a motion to move forward in that 
have the town supervisor, the town attorney, and, and the town development director um, <clears throat> put a plan together about what is necessary for um, having this application go through. Could do that, definitely. I, I'd right. make that is motion that, if that's okay. Is there, a, is there a second to Linda's uh, motion? I'll second. Okay, it's been moved by Councilperson Call, second by Councilperson Moore, uh, directing uh, the supervisor uh, and Mr. Costello to work with the town attorney uh, on uh, the next steps and then to circle back with the applicant, uh, circle back with George. We'll keep you updated um, uh, as we go through that and uh, we'll be next in contact with you on Friday of this week. Thank, thank you very much. I appreciate the, the board's time and look forward to hopefully, you know, the opportunity to uh, prove ourselves to be good neighbors and uh, we'll be proud to be in, in the town of Penfield providing this uh, needed service. Great. George, thank you for uh, joining us tonight. Uh, Jim will reach out to you on Friday uh, after we have that conversation and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you very much. All right. Have a great evening. Be well. Be safe. All right. We'll move on to guest item D. Uh, this is Andrew Spencer uh, as part of the BME group, an update of Shadow Pine site plan. And um, I know that uh, combination of Mr. Costello and Mr. Valentine I uh, have been working closely with uh, Mr. Spencer, so um, I'll pass the uh, floor off to the three of you. Andrew, are the, before we get started, are, do you, would, you, would you like this blown up to certain areas or do you want to keep it where it is right now? Uh, we can keep it right where it is right now and then as we get into some of the details, maybe we can blow Very it up. Very good. Great. Okay. So, Sounds like uh, they're going to let you fly solo. And so and have at it. That's fine. Thank you very much. Um, I'm here to try to give you an update of where we stand in the process of the redesign of the Shadow Pines Golf Course, as well as bring you up to date of some of the things that are occurring out there today. Um, let me start with the disc golf uh, entity. As you know, uh, Tim Masterton and his crews have been out on the golf course. They've been doing some brush hogging of the 18 hole layout for the disc golf course. Um, and I believe they've gotten approximately 15 of the holes, 14 or 15 of the holes completed with the brush hog um, situation. Um, the, uh, the team that uh, I am working with from the disc golf side, we uh, actually had gone out and flagged a uh, few other areas for some more uh, sapling cuttings and things of that nature that Tim is going to be doing over the course of the next few weeks. Uh, in the hopes that we can get everything brush hogged and be able to get a final mowing plan for the course. Uh, and as we walk in and um, progress to that stage, um, the disc golf group would like to get out on the course and put up some temporary baskets and be able to trial the course and make sure the layout is what it is that we contemplated on paper. Um, so in the course of potentially this next two weeks, I'd like to set up a time where bring some temporary baskets out and invite some, um, uh, some amateur players as well as some of the uh, upper notch players out to the course and, and throw some discs and see how it works. Uh, that way we can give Mr. Masterton a little bit better idea on where that mow area is really going to be. Okay. Um, so it's, it's exciting. I've, I've walked the site a few times and uh, seeing it come together. And we're very, very uh, happy that we've got it uh, to this point already. Okay. Um, any questions about the disc golf course end of things at this point? All the, right. I kind of jumped to the northeast quadrant, mm -hmm. which is kind of our rec area. Um, we have revised the conceptual plan and put a little bit more detail into it. I know this may have been routed to everyone. Um, what we are showing is for the use of this area, um, I'll go through some of the elements on here um, and start immediately with parking. Uh, what we're depicting on the site is a parking facility that could host 88 uh, vehicles on it currently. Uh, we're also showing two curb cuts out onto Whalen Road. Um, per a discussion that we had here at, at Town Hall, 
Um, I think we'll be working with uh, Mr. Valentine and ourselves to make, uh, get in touch with the county DOT uh, to see if they're amenable to having two curb cuts onto the Whalen Road versus having a single curb cut. And that's something that I will work with town staff on uh, and we'll, we'll coordinate that effort. Um, <clears throat> with the two points of access to provide a little bit more flexibility how people can get into and out of the site uh, that's what that's what that can provide for us uh, within the parking area we anticipate that we would be doing some bioretention type of gardens within that uh, that area uh, and drain to a center area thank you mr castello uh, drain to a center area of the parking field uh, to be able to recharge the ground and to be able to get that out of uh, the water out of that area um, we are showing an approximately 40 by 60 foot uh, main pavilion area uh, with a bathroom facility right on the south end i uh, feel that it probably appropriate to have the bathroom facility uh, attached to that structure uh, and that could be the main structure for the area uh, we've shown a playground area just to the north of that pavilion as well as a tot lot which would be right to the west of that um, I apologize some photos uh, I didn't communicate and provide some photos that I would like to give to the board the thought process of the playground is kind of doing a natural play um, and I think that you're well aware you have a few here in the town I'd like to continue that aspect uh, bringing in the, the large logs the boulders the things of that nature uh, instead of a man-made structure as a playground um, <clears throat> uh, further to the south we did incorporate uh, a series of the hard courts that have been requested uh, we have two areas of pickleball courts with a total of 12 courts um, and then to the east of that we have an area that could accommodate approximately four tennis courts um, we've also included a basketball court right to the north of the pickleball court and there is a trail system that would connect all of that from the main pavilion, uh, the tot lot playground area, and bring people down through into the court area. Uh, also proposing like a 20 by 40 pavilion to the west of the pickleball courts. Um, that was a request from uh, Mr. Froome to have an area that would be shaded. And it makes a lot of sense. If it, people are out there, they're done playing or waiting to play, they can be um, out of the sun. Uh, but immediately to the west of that could be the picnic area. Uh, and again, a trail network going through, uh, through that zone where we could have picnic tables, um, above ground, uh, uh, grill stations, um, and a path network to kind of draw you through and bring you through the entire area. Um, did also propose one smaller shelter right in between the pickleball courts I and mean, we need to determine whether or not we need another shade structure in that zone um, but we're also anticipating that improvements to this area are going to include bringing water and water service down uh, bringing in um, water fountains into the area uh, potentially around the picnic area and the pickleball court so people can refill bottles and things of that nature we have to bring water in for the bathrooms anyway and so we could extend and provide some some water areas uh, on in this park area um, immediately to the west of that is the area which would be the lawn play area and what we have is roughly about 4.6 acres of lawn area as the initial start of that programming uh, we're trying to maintain the trees along Atlantic Avenue the best we can for the time being uh, we know they are not in great shape uh, they may not last forever but there is the uh, opportunity to have an extension of a lawn area of approximately about another acre worth of area uh, and to the south of that four acre parcel there's another piece that's about two and a half acres worth of land that could be uh, accommodated uh, so the initial I think the initial stab will be to um, design and grade out the main lawn area grade out for the hard court areas parking lot and pavilion area and then we can look forward if it is a success which I believe it will be there is the opportunity to expand uh, those lawn 
those lawn areas. But we can maintain all the trees that are there that are in good health. Um, as I speak to the utilities as well, uh, did have a discussion with Mr. Valentine uh, uh, here at Town Hall talking about how to service the bathrooms. Uh, we feel that it will have to be a forced main type of situation and what we're looking at right now is to connect over to the west uh, and, and bring a forced main over into Harwood Circle. Um, our survey crews were out and they did complete the topographic survey, they did locate uh, the sanitary sewer lines over in Harwood uh, and now we're at a point where we need to really get into the design of all of these other facilities. Wanted to bring it before the board to make sure we're going in the correct direction uh, before we start putting that pen to paper, if you will. Um, and we do have, and on this plan, we're showing a, a network of walking trails, the biking trails coming through to try to connect to some of the existing. We are making the connectivity to Atlantic Avenue on the west side, making connectivity um, on the east side as well at the, at the intersection uh, to bring individuals into the park area. I wonder if you had any questions on this piece before I jump into the last piece. <laughs> Board questions uh, for, for Andrew or, or for Mr. Valentine and Mr. Costello. Must be you did a, a bang up job. So we'll go on to the, we'll go on to the next uh, piece of that. Um, the next piece is the mountain biking piece. Um, and I know in the, um, documentation I provided. Did you forward I, that, Mr. Costello? I sent what you sent me. Okay. I don't know if we have the, the back portion of it. And, and that's fine. I mean, we could just do 10,000 10, yep. foot overview. We did make contact with a number of different organizations and individuals that are very excited about the mountain biking uh, area, um, all of which have been contacted via phone and email. Um, a majority of them, I believe eight out of the 10, would be uh, very interested in coming in to speak about this as well as to go and meet on the site and do a preliminary walkthrough of that southwestern portion of the south Shadow Pines area. Um, and what we intended on doing is bringing them here into town hall, having a generalized discussion about what everybody's priorities are. The number of different groups, they have a number of different priorities and kind of flush out uh, some of the things that they would like to see um, and try to get a consensus amongst them on how this can be arranged and then designed. Uh, we also have reached out to a group which uh, uh, focus in on accessibility, uh, ADA accessibility, and they are on board to uh, come in and, as well. There are some individuals in this area that, that do have some physical disabilities that still want to go mountain biking. Um, so. It's important that we try to um, try to bring those into into the loop as well. So, what I would propose doing is, in the course of the next few weeks, is to get all these individuals together and start that meeting process, and set up a time to go tour uh, the area, and then come back to the board with um, some recommendations, observations, what have you, from that group. Uh, I volunteer Councilwoman uh, Draw, uh, who's a big uh, bike enthusiast uh, and has got a lot of time on her hands these days to be part of that, uh, that group. Mr. Spencer and I have already been on the same, we've been in contact a little bit about it, so I'm absolutely on board with yeah. doing that. Thank Great. you yeah. for sending we'll just form. We'll just formalize that. That's so. absolutely fine. No motions are necessary. No, no. no. <laughs> this, okay. this is just, you know, that's the way it rolls on, on this one, so. Supervisor's prerogative. Um, so questions for Andrew uh, as it relates to mountain biking. Uh, I think one of the things that uh, I, I enjoyed as uh, I was taking a look at uh, your memo that you submitted, uh, Andrew, is the fact that uh, there is such a broad, uh, again, it gets into, you know, the inclusion factor, uh, which I think is key. I think it gets into, you know, our youngest residents, uh, that, uh, that uh, group. Of, uh, of, of young children uh, to give them an opportunity for um, getting out on the course and things like that. Obviously, uh, everybody's pr pretty familiar with Grok and uh, the activities that uh, Grok uh, does in some of these uh, larger uh, bike shops and uh, some of the activities. 
and uh, historically they have been very good stewards uh, of helping to uh, maintain and uh, construct and do some things uh, and uh, that really makes it a good partnership between in this case the town of Penfield uh, some of them uh, parents and uh, kids themselves to, to be involved with that process and and of course town board members so board I'll ask uh, questions uh, for Andrew at this just, point just real quick maybe maybe a couple comments things to think about you know is is a part of the shadow pines um, land use advisory committee you know we talked a lot about mountain biking in what I like to call the back nine you want to call it that the, the southern portion and you know there was some discussion about you know if the if the mountain biking was going to be more on a technical side if it was going to be more family friendly and, and I believe the consensus was to make it more of a family friendly mountain biking area and I, I even think one of the the members on that committee who is uh, very involved in mountain biking acknowledged that the the terrain wasn't really conducive to technical mountain biking per se like some of the other county parks that are and so I would just ask that moving forward and I know uh, Councilwoman draw and I have talked about this that that we just keep in mind you know it is Penfield taxpayers that paid for this piece of property it was Penfield voters and residents that voted in support of the town um, taking control of this property and I certainly think that this provides an opportunity for um, a very family friendly environment for mountain biking you know we, we see kids all over the neighborhoods you know building little jumps in their yard and and riding the bikes around and having a good time and I think we've got an opportunity here to do something special that that, that can be a little bit challenging to some I'm not not saying it it needs to be all you know green like for skiing you know the the, the slopes that are green versus blue and, and black diamond but um, just keep in mind you know a family friendly environment for mountain biking I think is is great and it keeps kids active in biking you know as a part of our town's wellness programs in the community and so forth and so um, you know I'm just throwing that out there for consideration moving forward that uh, you know keep in mind just to make it more family friendly I think that was the consensus from the Shadow Pines, the resident-led Shadow Pines Land Use Advisory Committee, um, that ultimately created uh, the concept of the master plan. So um, certainly, I know uh, Councilwoman Draw likes the technical side of mountain biking, but um, we'll, uh, you know, having some 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 intermediate stuff in there would be great too, from a personal perspective, but. Um, I think we do have an opportunity to really um, get young kids into mountain biking and have it fun and exciting for them and for parents and older brothers and sisters and you know aunts and uncles and grandmas and grandpas that are into biking to go with them and enjoy it together so just comment mr. supervisor you know moving forward on the process thank you yeah, duly noted. thank you Other I guess comments? all I wanted to say was I was actually on a green trail with like 10 year olds that were way better yeah, than I was. <laughs> so, I mean, I know I agree. You can't make it too boring where you they know, don't think it's any but fun. But you know what? I, I agree. I've walked that property, the back, over and over again. I walk it and see what it, and, I, and there's people coming up on bikes on it as well right now. Little kids, big kids, any, and adults. So, I agree. I would love to see it um, accessible for everybody to be able to use it. So, I mean, I think that's a prime piece of property, the entire park you know, is um, user for everyone. So I'm, I'm very ha happy that we can use it for everybody. So um, thank you. I look forward to a walk with everyone. Yeah, too. great. Thanks. Yeah. I think as Mr. S uh, Supervisor had kind of noted too, that there's a pretty wide cross section of individuals that, uh, uh, that we've kind of gotten and pulled together. Don't want to open up this up to a million people. Um, but I think we have a very good cross-section of everybody that has, a, again, a priority across the board and duly noted. Um, this won't, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a compromise. I mean, I understand right. it's a compromise. Right. It's not, you know, everybody's going to get some of what they want. 
I just would hope that it not be so overly technical that families can't really use it. Because there are other, as you know, there's other places yep. in the county that support that kind of mountain biking, which is great. Right. But this may not be the right spot for that kind. Other comments? Board uh, comfortable with the direction thus far? Uh, again, there are three major components. I mean, there will be other components, but the three major components uh, that came out of the uh, conceptual master plan uh, was uh, the pickleball aspect, uh, disc golf aspect, and mountain biking. And uh, I know that uh, Mr. Spencer and his team have been working uh, to try to hit all three of those. Uh, and then as we go through, we'll uh, fill in with additional trail work uh, and activity access points uh, for what I'll call all four sides uh, to be able to get into that. And then uh, as uh, time goes on and uh, funding is available, uh, additional um, either shelters or other types of structures that uh, would be placed uh, throughout the site. Um, so conceptually, uh, like where we're going and yes. uh, have uh, the team continue on. Yes. Yeah, and would it be possible to, for the town staff to send the town board that um, map? I believe we did do did that. Did you already do yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, I'll check. Okay. All right. Uh, so before we uh, move on to our next uh, topic, I'll just ask, uh, Andrew, any additional comments that you'd like to add to the record tonight uh, on the ongoing effort of developing uh, the Shadow Pines property? Uh, the only thing is I think that we'll work with town staff on uh, engineering and uh, really the next step is kind of looking at uh, the utilities and getting the utilities to uh, to the site for that northeast quadrant. Um, I, as I said, I'll be looking to set up a meeting with the mountain biking uh, group in the course over the course of the next couple of weeks. I hope to be back in front of you in, in a month's time with a, an update and uh, even more information. with great. Go forward. Great. Excellent. All right, uh, staff, any additional comments that you'd like to see added to the record that we haven't already discussed this evening or in previous meetings? No. Enjoy okay. working with, uh, with Andrew. He's staying right on track for us. So okay. All right. Andrew, thanks for coming in. We look forward to uh, seeing you in the next uh, three to four weeks or so awesome. on the next, uh, the next steps. Yeah, sounds good. All Thank right. you very much. Great. If you need the contact information for council person draw, uh, we have that so we can make sure she's included as part of those meetings. Very good. Thank All you. All right. Thank you. Be well, be safe. Thank you for coming in. Okay, we'll move on to uh, action items. Uh, our first action item this evening is a sidewalk waiver request at 1851 Clark Road. And uh, we'll turn the driving over to Mr. Valentine. Thank you. Uh, with us this evening is... Uh, Mr. Mark uh, Pendoff, um, he is uh, currently before the planning board. Uh, you can come up to the table and uh, can answer any questions the board has. Um, so looking at uh, the aerial photo that's up uh, is the existing home that's on Clark Road. Uh, there's a small house that's in that location uh, with a garage beside it. I'm not an architect, he is. I'll let him talk about the architecture if that comes up. Um, but uh, the existing garage is coming down. He's looking at an expansion of the house. Uh, and then a garage on the other side. So that's currently pending before the planning board. But as part of that, you know, normal requirements is uh, the requirement for sidewalks along the road frontage. Um, and looking at it and uh, staff's review of it, um, there is existing sidewalks further up Clark Road. Uh, they stop a little bit past Harwood. Um, but as we've looked at where and how we might connect into the park, and I'm just zooming out, as we come up Clark Road, um, staff has looked at it. It may make sense to cross somewhere around Skyview Drive and then have sidewalks on the other side of the road. One, the elevation doesn't fall off. If you're familiar with Clark Road, as you get up to this bend, uh, there's a guide rail here and it falls off quite quickly. So it'd be difficult to install sidewalks on the back side. Um, but also with the, the park uh, property on the east side, um, if and when the board decides to do sidewalks um, on that east side of Clark Road and then tying into the park might be an easier connection. So um, I know Mr. Pendoff, um, you know, supportive of sidewalks, um, you know, but is, you know, seeking the waiver and um, staff is, is supportive of, of that waiver um, and a payment into the, the sidewalk fund that, you know, could fund sidewalks on Clark Road or, or somewhere in that area. Um, I know he's got with him his layouts of, of the house and other information if the board uh, desires. I did share with the board going through our uh, typical calculation. 
Uh, we look at, you know, the address, um, whether it's residential or not, it's one lot. It has 168 feet of frontage. Um, and then running through, we use the current uh, fee that's uh, based on, as part of the policy, the current running fee for what sidewalks cost per lineal foot uh, in the county bid price. Uh, we look at that and then we look at 50% um, of that construction cost is, is the, the waiver amount to pay in. Um, the 50% of that is, is just under uh, 4,000. We also have a cap on that of 5,000 per lot, you know, especially being residential, so it's not overly burdensome to someone to, to have to pay that fee. So um, the proposed, or according to our policy, the waiver fee would be just under $4,000 that would be paid at the time of, of building permit. Okay. That'll turn it over to the applicant and he can share what I've missed or what uh, part of the conversation uh, did not cover. No, I mean, I think you've said it, Mark. Um, I'm looking forward to renovating and putting an addition on the house at 1851 Clark Road, my fiance and I. Um, we're looking forward to moving into Penfield and being residents and uh, I'm, we're totally in favor of the sidewalk program. It's just that it, it, I think it makes sense to pay the fee and then have the town do the appropriate sidewalk extension when 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 they're right now um if i were to build a sidewalk as uh, mr valentine said we don't even know it goes nowhere yeah. it goes yeah. to nowhere it's go yeah. from some from nowhere to nowhere so right. i just think it makes sense to um to pay into the fund and have the town plan it appropriately and build it at, at the time when the time is appropriate so I know you're, uh, Mark, you're currently before the, uh, the planning board and then I think ultimately the zoning board as well. You're going to get a chance to go through the gambit. Uh, so <laughs> it's fitting to come before us as well. So you've got the trifecta overall. Um, what, uh, what stage are you at uh, with the planning board right now, Mark? And um, uh, wh where are you with uh, what you're proposing to do and uh, if receiving your approvals when uh, ideally when you plan on starting? We have, um, I have the construction documents, um, 90, 95% complete. I'm just, my structural engineer, uh, Carmen Torquia is just finishing up the structural. And um, I'm an architect and I'll be stamping the drawings. We should probably have the stamp set done by the end of the month. Um, and we're, we're ready to go. Um, I have contractors lined up. There's gonna be asbestos abatement of the uh, existing farmhouse and um, if all goes well and we get the site plan approval, we'd be looking for final site plan approval because everything is designed and the zoning board for the front setback, right. we'd be ready to go in September. Got it, got it, very nice. What, what uh, if you recall, what, what year was that uh, home built? I'm told that the farmhouse is uh, 1890 and uh, unfortunately, the past owners, I mean, going back decades and decades, they've, the original signing is gone. It's been recited, uh, replacement windows, replacement roof. So it's not, it doesn't have the uh, original farmhouse um, uh, aesthetics and materials, and we're going to turn it back into a farmhouse with uh, standing seam metal roof and um, shiplap siding and um, clad wood windows and and put an addition onto it. Yeah. Labor of love. Yeah. Labor of money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, was, I was not going to go down that path, but yes, right on, right on. All right. Uh, board uh, questions for Mark or Mark? And I'll let you pick uh, the one you want to ask the question of. Oh, I'm good. All right. <coughs> both, both good uh, in this end? Supportive, yes, supportive of the, uh, the waiver? I move that we grant the Sidewalk. Waiver Second. We move by Council Person Call, second by uh, Council Person Moore uh, to grant uh, a waiver as outlined uh, by uh, Mr. Valentine. Um, I'll uh, ask uh, uh, staff uh, any additional input that uh, you would like to see into the record that we haven't already discussed this evening. No, I think we covered it. All right. I'll ask uh, the property owner uh, any additional comments that you'd like uh, to add to the record uh, for this uh, proposal, for this application? No, sir. All right, great. Uh, there being a motion and a second on the table, uh, I'll ask for a roll call vote of approval. Draw. Aye. <coughs> Cole. Aye. The Fountain. Aye. Moore. Aye. Hockenden. Aye. Five eyes. All right, uh, Mark, we look forward to uh, the work uh, going on at that uh, location and to see that uh, bring 
bring it back to the way it uh, was many, many years ago. So good luck with that to, to you and your fiance. Does she know the amount of work you, you're getting? It, she's getting into. Yes, All and right. it's Great. and I'm um, getting and I'm getting a little pushback. So it's time to get started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I understand. Well, good luck. Uh, thank you for coming in. Uh, be well. Be safe. Thank you so much. All um, right. Have a good evening. Great thank to see you. you. Okay, uh, we'll move on to item B. This is a sidewalk waiver request at 1390 Fairport Nine Mile Point Road. Uh, again, Mr. Valentine. Thank you, and I don't know, Mr. Devlin, yeah. come on up. Bruce Devlin, Carlos Shoulder. Welcome. You. you can take the two-seater over there to. Well, I was <laughs> going to say, if you want to stay together, it's if you awesome. want to. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so again, uh, I'll just kind of uh, tee it up for the. For the board and the applicant um, this has been before um, uh, staff this is actually an administrative review um, didn't require since it's a single family residence um, did not require to go before the planning board um, this is uh, Fairport uh, so route 250 plank road on your screen uh, mr. Devlin um, is planning on building a single family house uh, for himself uh, on the property that's been under review we're, we're finalizing our review with that uh, but part of, our, again, our policy in, in this area is requirement for sidewalks on all frontages. So he has frontage along Plank Road, kind of a, an angle in the state right away, and then along uh, Route 250. So he's got quite a bit of frontage. Um, as the board uh, is aware, there are no sidewalks in the vicinity. Um, probably the closest sidewalks are either here at the town hall or somewhere down uh, Plank Road quite a ways. Uh, so staff is supportive of the waiver. Um, I did uh, run the, the calculation similarly. I shared it with, with Mr. Devlin uh, yesterday. It is a single family residential lot. Um, he has 785 feet of frontage counting plank and, and along 250. Um, again, the same county bid price number, um, his cost. So this is where we run into that $5,000 cap. The 50% compliance would be well above you know, what this board deemed an upper limit or a maximum cap on any uh, individual property, you know, so it didn't undo uh, burden one property. Um, so he would run into that $5,000 cap amount if the board, um, you know, was inclined to, you know, grant that that waiver for that. So um, staff and PRC is supportive of, of the waiver. There are no sidewalks in that area. Um, we're still working with, with Mr. Devlin to provide sidewalk easements as same as Mr. Pandoff, if and when long beyond my lifetime sidewalks made sense to go in that area that the easements are, are there and available and um, you know be beyond our time but as I shared with Mr. Devlin the, the sidewalk um, his money would go into the sidewalk fund and would you know fund sidewalks in other locations through the town and at some point when it comes out to his property then someone else may be helping to fund you know those sidewalks at that time okay. thank you Mark appreciate it any additional uh, comments uh, uh, thoughts no. um, some of that sidewalk you know, is uh, through the swampland, like, like he said, you know, probably two miles to the closest sidewalk other than that. So. Right, right. Okay. All yeah, right. there's a large drainage way along 250, along which 250. would right. ne necessitate or make it difficult to kind of install it through that area, you know, as it is. Um, their access is off of the plank road side, so you're kind of around that, that drainage way that's running north-south through there. Got it, got it. Okay. Board? Questions or comments uh, for uh, either the applicant uh, or Mr. Valentine? No. Okay. Any additional input uh, that uh, you'd like to provide? Uh, nope. Okay. No. Uh, staff, uh, any additional comments that uh, either we didn't uh, receive uh, via your email, Mark, or, or items we've discussed this evening? No, I think we're all set. All right. Board uh, would entertain a motion. I'll make a motion, Mr. Supervisor, to grant the sidewalk waiver for 1390 Fairport Nine Mile Point Road. I'll okay. Second that. It's been moved by uh, Councilperson Aachen and second by Councilperson Draw. Uh, there being no further comments uh, on the floor, then I'll ask for a roll call vote of approval for that. Draw. Aye. <clears throat> Cole. Aye. LaFountain. Aye. Moore. Aye. Aachen. Aye. Five ayes. All right. Thank you for joining us. Uh, sorry it took so long. It's been kind of one of those meetings. So uh, thank you for your time. Be well and be safe. And uh, good luck with the uh, the project. Very sounds good. Thank sounds you pretty much. exciting. That looks like a Looking beautiful piece digging. of property. Yeah, where yeah you right. Can put your house. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it's going to be gorgeous. And it's going to lay out nice. Yep. 
Absolutely. Excellent. Thank well, you. Well, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening. You too. Thanks. Okay. We'll move on to um, item C. This is Dr. H. Uh, request for uh, consideration of rezoning of properties at 2218, 2020, 2222, and 2226 uh, Penfield Road. And uh, Dr. H., I think he also has his uh, realtor um, with him as well. And uh, good evening. Welcome hey. back. Hi. Thank you. So, Ladies and gentlemen. All right. So, uh, yeah, we've come here for the continuation of the discussions that we had last time for um, possible rezoning uh, to general business for mm -hmm. the properties that you just mentioned. Um, I think it'll be, you know, very helpful for the community, and um, I think um, it will open up other venues, you know. And there is an interest for a car wash, like we discussed last time, uh, the Royal Car Wash. I think it's a beautiful building. It'll open up the back building as well, the spa building. It will be more um, visible from the road. And um, the way it is being structured is it's so far away from, you know, uh, the other building, the dental, uh, Dr. Sandin's building, it'll be, you know, uh, I don't think it'll be uh, the way. Uh, do you have that map? Uh, yes, I think we that, do. Uh, I'm going to pull that up. Don't see yet. I don't know if you remember, Hopefully but it is quite far away from the common road, you know. And as far as the traffic goes, you know, urgent care, as you're aware, when we started and, you know, down the road, we we were very busy, and we never had any problems on that road. We never, at that particular section, we never had any accidents or anything like that. So it's a fairly, you know, you can see the building is quite, you know, down from the common, common road, which, which is between the buildings. I think it must be at least like what? It's over 100 feet over from 100 feet um, the edge of the car wash to Dr. Sandin's building, but about 120 feet, I think, to be exact. Um, his building's buffered with a lot of uh, arborvitaes, and um, we met with Dr. Sandin about a week or two ago in his office. Um, he had some concerns. One was about stacking. We showed him the plan. The other was about uh, uh, visible, pol uh, visual pollution, we'll say, but we assured him that there would be plenty of landscaping to uh, buffer um, his building, which he has already. Um, but I understand that he had a conversation with Jim Costello today, and we're sort of blindsided by his statements that he gave. It's contrary to what he said to us when we met with him two weeks ago. So did you receive, uh, did they receive a copy of, of Dr. Sannon's uh, letter? Uh, so we, we received this uh, from uh, Jim uh, today. Dr. Sannon uh, submitted that uh, to uh, Jim, and uh, Jim uh, submitted it uh, to ourselves and uh, forwarded it over to you as well. So there, there certainly are some concerns that, uh, that he raises. I mean, he the first, uh, the first point, uh, as you're well aware, he uh, has no uh, interest uh, in having uh, his parcel rezoned. I mean, um, so as we, and again, Jim, if uh, we could, or sorry, Mark. Uh, I don't know what that means. I mean, if he's not interested, what does this mean? I mean, well, so his, he, he indicates that he's not interested in having his property rezoned uh, from the current zoning to general business. Uh, he feels that's his that property. That's not in his. And, and that's his property. He, he's just indicating that his his parcel, rezoning of his parcel, uh, and that uh, he did not uh, have any interest or need uh, to have it uh, rezoned. Uh, that was his uh, first point. Uh, the second point uh, was uh, concern about traffic, uh, egress, and uh, along uh, Penfield Road. And uh, so that uh, is his second point. His third point. Uh, concern about uh, congestion uh, on the inside road uh, and uh, the impact to the uh, dental office and um, sees that certainly more you know in the winter uh, mm. this time of the year if we drive by yes I saw that yes we, as we I drive mean, by slush, car I couldn't understand what does it mean how can it 
I mean, these, all, this, all the stuff in a car wash is done inside a building. The likelihood of slush didn't, um, didn't uh, I mean. Well, I, uh, I did Royal Car Wash's first car, car wash in Rochester at the corner of Monroe and Clover. It's a very tight site, as, as I'm, if you've seen it, you'd know. Um, I don't think they've ever had a problem with, with stacking into the street. And, and they run about 60 cars an hour through there, which 60 cars an hour. Uh, when I went to the town meetings there, the, the neighbors didn't want the Royal Car Wash. They wanted a Starbucks. Starbucks runs about 60 cars every 15 to 30 minutes. So the traffic flow would have been a lot greater. Um, this was a lot, a lot less. So, and yeah, there will be periods of times where the traffic may be, may be busy, but once again, they can only run 60 cars an hour through there. So there's plenty of stacking on site. If there's three lanes of stacking, which would, would preclude um, any traffic from going into the drive lane and you've got multiple access points in and out of the property. Uh, a lot, it's a lot more convenient than Monroe and Clover. Okay. So um, 60, um, so it's uh, about, on a day, it's like, on a day like today, you know, when it's 90 degrees, uh, I drive by, I don't see 60 cars uh, at a car wash uh, during the course of maybe two or three hours. Right. Um, so uh, the prime time, typically is fall, winter, spring, uh, when folks are trying to keep uh, the Rochester salt off and extend the life of vehicles and things like that. Um, I was concerned about uh, the noise, especially the dryers at the car wash, and uh, feels that the noise uh, will further create uh, anxiety amongst his patients. Hmm. Um, and then um, he, uh, he built uh, his last, his last uh, point. So last point is is that he built his office uh, in a location uh, that was a quote unquote office park uh, setting uh, with medical offices around me with strong and Rochester regional uh, right behind me. I feel rezoning our parcel to accommodate a car wash would not be in the best interest of the town nor the medical offices that are currently existent. I mean his uh, office is next to all these, you know. His office the other side is Aldi's, so it's, it's not I, truly a medical complex. It was never presented to him in that fashion, you know, but... Um, so I'm just adding I mean, the information to the record. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, uh, you know, the bottom line is, is that I have cons many concerns about uh, the proposed car wash. I hope the town reviews this ap application very carefully, uh, given uh, what I've uh, already outlined, and that's... Uh, uh, Manish uh, Shannon, Dr. Uh, Dr. Right. Sh uh, Shannon, so uh, for part of the record. So, board questions, comments? To, uh, to Mr. Valentine, if this was to move forward, were there, would there be any required um, engineering or traffic study with the 441 corridor there? Yeah, I mean, we've um, looked at this as, as an office uh, complex before. Um, it does have turn lanes coming out of it, but we would still uh, request a traffic study to be done for it, look at the stacking. Um, obviously, it's coming off of a state road, so the state would have concerns if there was showing any, you know, queuing or stacking out into the road. Um, we've also looked, and, and as part of this, um, this is in the Luamp district, the cross connect between properties is typically a required element not get too deep into this this design but with this current configuration with the exit so close or into Tim Horton's property I think staff has a little bit of concern of you always have that wash water that comes off the cars um, I know on Penfield Road and I'm not you know picking on Royal Car Wash versus Delta or whatever but the, the wash water that comes off the vehicles is a lot of freeze thaw you see uh, some impact to pavement so I'd have a little bit of concern of that discharging directly into Tim Horton's property now it becomes you know potential deterioration for their property so but obviously that's getting into site plan and you know if we go to that that level obviously we want to see that detailed out how does that circulate around how does that lay out but the cross connect is typically a requirement between two properties in this area to get through this one we'd have to closely take a look at that and make sure if it did become a car wash it doesn't impact Tim Horton's and it doesn't you know, one, add more congestion, that's their exit of their drive-through, um, the exit of the car wash, you know, as well as, you know, that 
drip water that comes off, you know, make sure that doesn't impact the pavement on the Tim Hortons property. Okay. Or I, other other comments? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm not trying to create any controversy, but you know, you had a conversation with the doctor next door, and it seems like that conversation went fairly well. And then we get this letter, and I think it was you, Mr. Palumbo, that, that said that kind of caught you off guard with some of his concerns because that was, was not expressed yeah. Yeah, during the his, conversation. Correct. His concerns were uh, visual pollution. He didn't want to really see the car wash. Actually, he said he put the uh, landscape up that he has on his property because he didn't like to look at the doctor's building, and he didn't want his clients to look at his doctor's building, which I respect. I mean, that's, that, that's understandable. Um, we said not a problem. You know, we would work the, the town to make sure there's adequate landscaping along the roadway to, to buffer the uh, car wash from, you know, visually from, from his building, which he's got some there already. Um, and he was concerned about stacking. Once again, um, this preliminary plan has quite a bit of stacking, more than they'll ever need. But um, I think it more than services, you know, any concerns about pulling in and out of the property. The other thing too is is that you know, the doctor here has over 30,000 square feet of uh, building space there. Um, it's been and not that this is you know why it should be rezoned, but it's been a financial burden. We've been marketing this for quite some time and haven't had a lot of interest. Um, so you know this just helps further the uh, the visual aspect of the building in the rear. Um, we did I did have a tour yesterday with a medical group. They looked at the front building. They looked at the back building. And um, and uh, when we presented the opportunity that this front building may be taken down, not guaranteed, but may, uh, they showed uh, uh, some great interest in the rear building. Yeah. No, no interest in the front building. No, sir. No. And and part of the reason is, um, you know, to all due respect to the doctor. That building is not visually appealing, and it doesn't lend itself to an office-type use. It did for an urgent care because that's what he built it for. The reality is it will never be an urgent care again, and, and the roof lines and the shape of it don't flow real well. It would take a considerable amount of money to gut the inside of that building and try to create some sort of environment that it could be usable in its condition. I just had a question to ask you on the back building you said you just took somebody through that when you said that the built front building might come down I mean and I don't want to put you on the spot did you mention that there might be a possible car wash in yes. front? oh yes so yes. they were uh, they were more concerned about visibility to the building no um, not so okay. much uh, the fact the they didn't have a problem with the car wash they were happy to hear that as they stood in the uh, circle of the doctor's building they could look down and see Rochester Regional Health throughout the shopping center, and then they could visualize uh, the expansiveness of 441 and the visibility from that drive lane coming up to their building. I, I think this car wash building is really a, a pretty building. I mean, you know, I think uh, it's not like, even I was talking, remember I talked to you a few months ago? You didn't like it initially until you went yeah, and looked at it. Yes, I mean, it's it seems like, um, it's a beautiful building, really. Similar you know, construction to the Tim Hortons, too, so it would complement the area. Is it their standard <coughs> design it would be that we see? Standard red so brick building. Right. Like I said, similar to Tim Hortons, about 30 feet wide, which now gives you over 100 feet of visibility from the mm -hmm. road to the rear building. So I actually just went out and looked at like the one in Victor, a couple of their buildings lately. One of the things I had a question was, a concern on that, is they're coming in, if they were to come in on Penfield Road, they're pretty much going to go right back out on Pen, I'm sorry, yeah, on uh, route, yeah, on Penfield Road. They're going to go right back out there. I don't see them ever veering in the back and using the access. I mean, it, it, am I correct in saying that? That's I, I guess pretty it much just depends on what direction they're going. You know, if somebody's heading north on um, Nine Mile Line Road, they mm -hmm. may use the access road. If they're pulling through and going to Aldi's or the shopping center, they could come back out I mean really it's you know it's hard to say it just depends on the direction I use the the um, Royal Car Wash at Monroe and Clover yeah if it's in the morning I'm going downtown to the office I come down Clover Street if it's at night and I'm coming in I'm turning 
right heading up Clover Street. So really, it, you know, it just depends on what direction it really doesn't the look people like that are problem. utilizing the facility are going. No different than Aldi's or Tim Hortons or any one of the other retailers there. So. Um, people are, I don't, I don't think it's going to bring more people to the area. I think it's just going to service the people that are there already. Yeah, I, I don't have any issues with the, the back access road. I mean, because I would be heading north on, um, you know, Nine Mile Point Road heading home. And so I would go yeah, that way, that too, versus it. getting back on to 441. So I think there will be some, you know, I don't know what percentage of people will use it, but there will be some people that will use that back access road to, to head north on Fairport Nine Mile Point Road or stop at the bank or stop somewhere while they're in that vicinity. Wasn't that the intention when they built it? Was to, to sure. alleviate some of the traffic sure. off of 441 yeah. if Absolutely. they were heading north? So I, I don't see it as a negative. And, you know, and once again, no disrespect to the doctor. You know, the roads are, are built. We're used to plowing and salting roads. That's, that's where we live. We're in Rochester, New York, you know. So um, I, I don't see that, that uh, slush coming off the road is going to be a detract in, in any way. Is Tim Hortons on board for the rezoning? We've had no discussion th with Tim Horton. I was focusing on Dr. Sandin because he was directly impacted right. on the same property. Well, yeah, that, see, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking along the lines that you don't want to create a spot zoning if you have uh, the that's other the one, issue. That's, one yes, that's uh, the business issue. doesn't want to change, and then you have one change, and then, well, if the other one doesn't want to change either, then it creates something that... It's yeah. Tim Hortons we, general we, business, though, isn't it? No, it's, no, not. it's, it's limited. limited. The other thing with Tim Hortons is I, I am concerned, I think the PRC is concerned about dumping traffic into Tim Hortons' parking lot because there are cars coming from the north to south into that area. There could be a conflict there depending on the intensity of, of when the uh, both businesses are running at the peak at the same time. So Obviously, that gets into a site plan design and they submitted a conceptual layout that obviously that could be reviewed and well before we get to this, too far down that path uh, the first issue that uh, the board uh, has to address is the rezoning and uh, certainly the what will follow will be the uh, site site plan component uh, so I think the question on the table for the board is uh, is there enough support to take this to a rezoning public hearing uh, to give uh, any and all folks, not only in this area, uh, but our residents an opportunity to weigh in uh, for or against uh, the rezoning. And I think that's the next, that's the next step uh, if you're willing to go, go that path. A quick question, Mr. Supervisor. Is the rezoning rezoning in general or is the rezoning a rezoning given this intended use? Well, this is the use that's before us, so it would be, you know, essentially for this intended use. Okay. I, I'm fine going to the public hearing, taking it to the next step, and uh, seeing where we go from there. So, I'd, if you're asking for a motion, I'll make a motion. Yeah, I'll second that. Okay. So it's uh, been moved by Councilperson Moore, second by Councilperson Draw, that uh, that we move it to the next step. Um, I will enter into the record uh, so that uh, the cards are on the table and I don't like to surprise anyone. Uh, I will vote to support to go to a public hearing. I will not guarantee that uh, there will be a vote for me to approve the rezoning. Uh, we will listen to and weigh all of the information that comes in, uh, not only from property owners in this area, uh, but also our residents. Um, so I will vote to move it forward for consideration, but I may not vote uh, at the end of the day for rezoning. I, so, I echo what you're saying because, you know, <laughs> I think we're coming to the same mindset. You know, when you have this, uh, the, the, well, you have the zoning as it is in this one property in the middle, it, it, it's awkward, you know. But we, we bring it to a, a public hearing. We can hear from the people, but I'm, I'm not sure I'd be willing to uh, change the, the zoning. I'd have to be. Not to be I disrespectful, but we already are a spot in that area anyway. We are a spot. If you look around on one side and the other side, you know, there is all general business, and we are a spot in the middle right now. There, there is others on either side of you that are the same zoning you are. You're, yes, but we are. Okay. 
Is there a map that the other no, one that no, you no. had? No, no, we, we understand. We understand. I mean, respectfully, I just the, the concept though that Linda is trying to convey to I you, which is, is to have one parcel sitting in an island by itself as one zone with everything completely around it is something else. That could be construed as spot zoning, right. which isn't allowed. Is if the is it spot zoning if the owner chooses not to engage? Or, I mean, I don't, I don't know, and I'm not, I don't want to think for the doctor, but right, there's I mean, no reason for him not to want to have it zoned as general business, other than to stop this from moving forward. I mean, there's no, there's no, there's I mean, nothing negative the, about him having his property zoned general business, is there? Well, it's the I, same. I, I guess we'll find out mm -hmm. from the doctor right. what his views are. I'm <laughs> right. not going to speak for no, him. No, I understand. He's, but his concerns about the car wash. I, sure. I understand that. So I, I get it. Yeah. Okay. Well, and right. I think we need to do some discussion with uh, Mr. Horowitz about what his oh, perception of absolutely. spot zoning is. Absolutely. Absolutely no question about oh, it. Okay. So, Thank okay. You. So uh, right uh, right now, I believe there is a motion on the table from Mr. Moore, mm -hmm. seconded by uh, Councilperson mm -hmm. Draw to at least advance us to the next step. Mm -hmm. um, I'll ask uh, staff uh, any additional comments that we haven't discussed this evening or we discussed two weeks ago that you believe should be added to the record at this time. No, I believe uh, Dr. H is ready to make an application. He's provided me with some materials already, so I suspect that we'll probably be moving along fairly quickly to set a public hearing or rezoning uh, request. Okay, all right. Uh, Dr. H, uh, does yes. the rezoning request, Jim, um, will it require an updated site plan? So should should no, it, it will should require, they come in to see you? It to will really require the, the the legal description of the boundaries of the properties in question, which he has provided just, me. Uh, okay. So. Okay. Board, uh, any additional questions, comments? All right. Motion on the floor and seconded. I'll ask for a roll call vote to advance this to the next stage. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. LaFountain. Aye. Moore. Aye. Akenden. Aye. Five eyes. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening. Go home and get your beauty rest. Thank you. All right. Uh, we'll move on to item D. This is a request for a hold harmless agreement at 5 Terrace Hill Drive. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, so we received this request, uh, the homeowner, and I will pull up their requested site plan. Um, they're looking to put uh, a fence in the backyard. Uh, they recognize that they have an easement in the backyard, uh, which is our storm sewer, uh, which feeds off uh, to the west. So there's a catch basin in the back. Uh, they would like to install their fence in the back. Um, in review of the property, uh, don't have a major concern about it being in the easement, uh, but obviously have a concern about it being over top of the catch basin itself. Uh, so staff would recommend the pipe is fairly deep. It's five to six feet. Um, so there's not as much of a concern about it being directly over the pipe, but it's in the same alignment where the catch basin is. So staff's recommendation would be to offset it a couple of feet so it's not directly over the, the catch basin structure, allowing our sewer department to get access should it need to be flushed, great removed, anything else you know within that area. So um mr uh, demarco is not uh, with us this evening i believe he's having his rehearsal dinner um so his apologies for not being here but uh he, he wanted to be but uh, uh i said i could uh share his thoughts in, in his absence and uh, convey it to the board and hopefully answer any you questions did a fine here. job mark thank you <laughs> i will <laughs> share that back with him <clears throat> mr uh mr Zipriser, i think this is a pretty standard um agreement i I would offer that to make a motion to approve this. Okay. Second. I'm, uh, moved by Councilperson Moore, second by Councilperson Cole. Um, any further discussion? Uh, I'll ask first the staff any additional input to be added to the record on this? Um, obviously, we we'll just prepare the resolution for the board's consideration if, if it passes. Okay, great. With the caveat. Oh. All right, thank you. Uh, motion on the table, seconded. Uh, I'll ask for a roll call vote, please, Sue. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. LaFountain. Aye. Moore. Aye. Akenden. Aye. Five eyes. All right, uh, we'll move on to um, item E. Uh, this is a request for a grade fill permit at 18 Old Westfall Drive. And again, Mr. Valentine. Thank you. Uh, we were contacted uh, by Luke Rowden. Um, he is the owner of the property. 
Um, he first said he had a, uh, an area that was uh, kind of settled uh, up on the northeastern portion of his property, I guess it would be northwestern portion of his property, but east side of Old Westfall. Um, he's requested, and I've provided uh, to the board uh, his application. He's filled out a grade and fill permit as well as an EPOD permit. He is working in a steep slope area, uh, completed those items. And I'm just scrolling down to his sketch plan. So he's showing his proposed fill area in that, in that corner, um, again on his site plan. And then he's kind of provided a sketch of, excuse me, of where um, he says he has uh, two young children. And as children, he's just trying to create some more flat uh, play area for the children. Um, but based on the amount of fill that he needs, uh, we require a grade and fill permit for anything over 50 yards. I believe in his application, he said 4,200 yards. Our calculations, it was closer to 500 yards, so it's less than that. Um, but it is a, still a significant amount of fill. Um, there are steep slopes in the area. Um, you know, staff. Obviously, our concerns are around if it was so granted, make sure we've got an erosion control plan in place, make sure there's proper silt fence there. Where's the material coming from? What's the time frame? Um, how's the compaction going to go? What's the final stabilization of, of that area? So um, ours is kind of more of a, you know, mean, means and measures of how, you know, would it be done? What's the, you know, intended? Uh, you know, final stabilization is a grass, what's on that slope, you know, it might, re you know, require temporarily some erosion control fabric on that slope to kind of hold that until it, until it stabilizes. But uh, just due to the amount of fill, um, we did get a call. Um, he had started doing some fill in the area and did get a call from a resident with question concern on it. That's what brought it to us. And then, you know, based on what his plan was, it was more than just kind of a, initially thought it was just a little fill by the road and there was kind of a low spot. but showing he's looking to create some more lawn area, you know, wanted to bring it to the board and, you know, get your, your thoughts and feedback on that. Mark, uh, could you uh, slide that over to the north and the east a little bit? This is his sketch. I can go back to the aerial oh. image if, if that's helpful. This was just showing, he's yeah, showing got in, it. Okay. in blue where his proposed contours are. So these are the existing contours. You can kind of see it's a sloping yard. He's looking to obviously flatten it out and then it would be steeper up you know, towards his, his property line, so he would create more of a, a flat area in his side yard uh, for the kids, but then obviously that would create a, a steeper slope area, you know, at that back edge with that flat area. I can go back to the the aerial okay, imagery, so this you. turned a little bit old Westfall, you know, we're looking north, so this is that, that area off the side of the road. It's kind of brushy right now. Um, I could turn the contours on if that's helpful. Mark, what is to the north? Is, there, is it another homeowner's property? There's another homeowner's property to the right north. There. So there's a house there. There's a bit of a, a, a treat area in between. Um, can turn the contours on. You can see a significant amount of grade. So the house is over here. They've got a significant amount of grade that falls down into this yeah. into the valley. Um, there's Goes some grade here. To Dr. House. Right. So he's filling this corner, and then I'll turn the contours off before I. What is he proposing lunch. to use to support that fill? He's just looking to bring soil in and keep yeah, but wouldn't it wouldn't it just you know just keep going you know gravity well, always wins wouldn't it eventually just that's start eroding why away? we need to at least in our piece is what is he using to compact it you know if we just keep dumping it you got to kind of roll it in track it in compact it and then on that front face at least put some erosion control fabric put some stuff on there to you know until you get grass to grow right. you know used to plant crown vetch. Crown vetch is considered, you know, invasive species now, but so what's on that front face, you know, as you can see, you know, a lot of the other areas vegetated his trees on it. Um, but that's our concern is, you know, if this material gets dumped and we get a heavy rainstorm, um, you know, you could see mud running down the hillside, you know, until that's stabilized. So that's some of our questions back. What's the time period? Is he getting a load a week, a load a month? And this is going to be a six to 12 month operation? Does he have uh, access to fill material that could be, you know, more timely, get it in, get it done? You know, how does the neighbor to the north feel? Have not, we don't know, gotten to that, yeah. that point yet. Okay. But whether we want to have a public hearing on it, that's the board can have a prerogative to have a public hearing. Um, the smaller ones we typically handle administratively, somebody's filling in a low spot in their yard doing some grading drainage stuff. 
is typically handled administratively by the engineering department. Once we get into the hundreds of or thousands of yards, escalate that to the next level and you know we can reach out to the neighbors and share with them if there's any issues, concerns. The board, you know, we've had in the past, we've had public hearings for large, large, you know, fill amounts and everything else, but just know the sensitivity of the steep slopes in the area and wanted him. I mean, I don't necessarily have an issue with him putting in fill and trying to level out the property, but my concern is if you're going to do it, you got to do it right. And you got to make sure that you're not setting something up. So if we get two days of rain, all of a sudden you look out there and half your mound is gone because gravity always wins and you didn't do any proper support or you know erosion control and then the second question I have is you know how does that impact the neighbor's property yeah, and I, mean, I realize that the... that's that's a slope so maybe the <laughs> maybe the neighbor doesn't care or maybe he does care because it's kind of property that he probably doesn't use well, from what I'm seeing and I think we got to yeah. be uh, s sensitive to the fact that the neighbor to the north um, may not be the one that's impacted. It may be right. the neighbor right. down the hill, yeah. right. uh, especially if that lets, if that doesn't hold, it's not done properly, and all that uh, goes down over the bank. Um, I yeah, think that's, that's the sensitivity that, that I know Mark has and uh, his team has uh, to make sure, you know, if, if this is a six month event, um, that may not be the appropriate way to go if the guy uh, is uh, bringing in uh, a majority of his uh, material is uh, blow sand that might not work I mean so I mean we need to know I think in a little bit more detail uh, and so we've we've got this initial which I think is is a, a reasonable start um, you know he's filled out uh, the paperwork right. um, and has provided the map and everything like that but I think we need maybe a little bit more detail of uh, what he's, I mean, he, you know, he's talking about 4,200 yards of material. I mean, it's not a couple of we're power We got yeah. to, to our calculations. We, our math, it was closer to 500. Um, so I don't know if his math's off a little bit, but I also want to clarify that is whether the amount of area that he was looking to fill, you know, so one, one clarify that and then make him understand it's more than just, you know, weekend project just to kind of dump stuff he's going to have to put in silt fence and he's going to have to do you know some compaction and he's going to have to do some slope stabilization so it's going to be more of a project than just a say a weekend warrior but just I'll dump a little fill and then when I get to it I get to it that you know yeah. due to the sensitivity of the steep slopes that he's going to have to have some additional skin in the game of installing silt fence properly properly stabilizing it um, you know making sure it's compacted properly what the material is yeah. um, so, so, so do, you, do you have a list of things that we need to hear from him? To we, we had started a list of our, of our comments and, and concerns and, you know, wanted to get the, obviously the board's take. We can add in your concerns as well, send it back to him and, you know, put it as a, a held matter until we get, you know, additional, I think we should, additional I think we feedback. Should and then yeah. when we have additional materials or, you know, he's available to come and attend and, you know, either answer some of those questions in writing or in person, then we can you right. know, bring it okay. back for... And I think you know, one of the other things that uh, we're going to have to ask <clears throat> is that uh, do we need a letter of credit uh, so that, uh, again, you're filling a low spot in your yard and uh, if you have a little bit of erosion, you know, uh, before it gets a good catch of grass, uh, typically it will stay in your yard. But uh, we're, we're looking here that uh, it's got the potential to go on to a couple of properties. And uh, I think uh, that might be, that may raise an additional flag for that. So I'd entertain a motion to table, uh, gather some information, um, ideally in two weeks, uh, have him come back uh, to be here as well so that we can have that, whether it be in person or we zoom in and have that uh, broader conversation. And hopefully anything you get ahead of time, Mark, uh, you can, uh, actually submit that, uh, you know, to the board or route that to sure. the board. I'll second that, Mr. Supervisor. All right. So it was moved by uh, LaFountain, seconded by Moore. Um, seeing no further discussion at this time, uh, I'll uh, ask for a roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. LaFountain. Aye. Moore. Aye. Akinde. Aye. 
Bye bye. All right. Thank you, Mark. Uh, we'll move on to item F. Uh, this is VARS requesting uh, rezoning at 125 Panorama Creek Drive. Uh, we did uh, have that, uh, that hearing. Uh, and uh, so, uh, board, uh, first I'll ask staff um, any uh, new or additional comments uh, that uh, have come in that uh, we should be aware of that we have not dis already discussed. No, we've received nothing from any neighbors or anybody of any interest uh, that might generate some comments to the board. Um, as I stated at the last meeting, we did receive comments from the county. Uh, those are all acceptable comments. Uh, the Comprehensive Plan Update Committee did make a recommendation for the rezoning, as did the Planning Board. Okay. All right. And I think we have both of those documents in our files. We do. So, board, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we have uh, a rep with I apologize. Mr. Goldman. Uh, Patrick is with us. Uh, that's Mr. Goldman. Oh, that's Goldman. I see that. I saw it. You're, you're, there we go. It's filled in now. Uh, sorry, Mr. Goldman. I apologize. I saw Patrick uh, come up on the screen, and uh, I was misled. So uh, do not want to confuse you with anybody other than Jerry Goldman. All right. Uh, you can confuse me with Peter Vars since his name is on the application. <laughs> yeah, true, true <laughs> enough. So Vars is on the application. I've got uh, I've got Jerry Goldman on the screen, and uh, I had a Patrick Mahoney uh, was typed in on the bottom of the screen. So if I put all that together, um, I'll ask uh, board. Uh, we've got Mr. Goldman here to answer any questions. Uh, are there any questions uh, that uh, you have? Any additional information that you feel you need um, that uh, you'd like to have addressed? No, I no, think so. we did a good job. Let's go yeah, right. this has been vetted yes. thoroughly. Yes, talked about it. I move okay. that we support the rezoning. Mm -hmm. I'll second it. Okay, it's been moved by Councilperson Cole and uh, seconded by Councilperson Ockenden. And uh, uh, board, uh, I'll ask uh, any above and beyond the normal rezoning um, uh, items that we have. Uh, I think the only one that comes to my mind and the applicant volunteered that was that uh, as part of the uh, rezoning uh, that there would be no uh, car dealerships uh, on that uh, property. They, uh, they volunteered that information as a condition that they would uh, support above and beyond the normal rezoning conditions uh, that uh, the board puts in place. Does the uh, no additional curb cuts need to be listed uh, as well? Uh, so good point. Uh, they did, uh, Mr. Vars did indicate that uh, there would be no additional curb cuts that would be added uh, to this uh, property if uh, rezoned. And uh, it fit, uh, again, within uh, what was previously zoned at that area, fit within the intent and uh, what's uh, being developed at that location. So uh, with that and uh, seeing no additional comments either from the board or staff. Um, uh, we have a motion and second on the table. Uh, I'll ask for a roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. <coughs> the Fountain. Aye. Moore. Aye. Hockenden. Aye. Bye byes. Okay, thank Mr. You. Goldman, thank you for hanging in there. Uh, good to see you. And uh, we'll look forward to the next step in the process. Which I understand is going to be preparation of a resolution by staff for the board's review. Yes, that is correct. Correct. Okay. Well, All right. Thank you very much. And All we'll right. Follow along and sounds good. You be well and be safe. You too. As thank well. Thank you. Great to see you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we will move on to item G. This is a request for a second curb cut at 107. Panorama Trail. Uh, this was originally Eric Tate. I convinced Mr. Tate if he bought Mr. Valentine a donut tomorrow that uh, <laughs> he uh, would take this uh, item for it. If he negotiated anything more than that, uh, then uh, good for you. So with that, I, Mr. Valentine. I didn't even hear about the donut. So <laughs> <laughs> shame on me. I said yes well before that. So. <laughs> um, is, um, Supervisor indicated um, there was a request for, um, just to get you oriented, there's the Farmbrook Drive Panorama Trail. Uh, the main access of the house is off of Panorama Trail. Uh, I believe they've been working on some fencing pool stuff in the back, um, but our, if the request to put a curb cut off of Farmbrook Drive, 
believe there is a camper, and I'll let the, the applicant speak to that, uh, that they access uh, or park on this side. Uh, this is the aerial photo, or at least the, the plat map uh, that I was provided. Aerial photo, Farmbrook kind of turned on the side. Um, Panorama Trail is on the lower side of it. I may go back to the, the aerial photo just for your yep. consideration on that. So um, with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Mr. DeMay if the board's. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, go right ahead if you would, please. Uh, yeah, I mean, basically it, it was summed up there. Um, to clarify, I don't have a, uh, a camper. Um, it, it's a uh, small utility trailer. Um, basically, when we purchased the house approximately five years ago, um, we didn't realize how overgrown it was and it's taken a ton of work and there's a lot more work in the future. Uh, and so I, I make some trips to the town to drop off, um, you know, dead tree limbs and, and things like that, that that continuously are being uh, taken down. And so I need somewhere to keep the trailer. Uh, I've been uh, keeping it over there. Uh, I didn't know that I needed this, uh, in all honesty. And so I, the area is designated already. Um, and I have uh, some uh, black mulch that, that designates the area. Uh, it's under uh, many trees, as you can see along that side road. Um, so it's kind of like hidden away. If you were to look at a, a street view, it's not uh, it's not right in your face. Um, and there's just there's no place in the front driveway to to store this. Um, and so this is my best option. Uh, and so I got to keep it somewhere. Okay, Mark, uh, could you do us uh, a favor and then put that uh, other uh, shot back up on the, and and your plan uh, is uh, in that area right there. Uh, your plan is not to have a formal curb cut per se. You've got some mulch uh, and you're kind of using that uh, as kind of a, a designated area where you're gonna where you're gonna tuck your trailer in. Correct. Okay. Yeah, it's been there for two years. Got it. Um, the only reason this has come about is there's a, a neighbor that doesn't like me now, apparently. Ah, got it. Okay. Yeah, that was my question is whether how long temporary permanent, you know, as the board knows, if it's going to be a formal curb cut under town regulations, we would require it to be paved right off the edge of pavements. So we don't, you know, impact the gutter. Um, if it's, you know, more of a, you know, a temporary situation or if it's not a formal curb cut, you know, just an area. Um, obviously, it, you know, something else could go, but if it's going to be a, a, a formal curb cut, you know, um, we would ask that it be paved off the back edge of pavement just so it doesn't impact, you don't end up breaking the gutter off if you come in and out with a heavily weighted, okay. you know, piece of equipment. Is yeah, it and, and like I said, you know, I, I'd like to just be honest, uh, I don't have uh, any desire to own this trailer any longer than I need to, but uh, I got to work on this property. So um, if some type of temporary um, uh, permit is an option that maybe wasn't explained to me before, uh, you know, I would be okay with that. I don't want to mislead anybody into think that I'm going to get it done this year um, or something like that. It's, it, there's, a, there's like 15 trees that need to come out and there's, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. So um, I'd love to say five years. I don't know how your temporary things work. Got it. Okay. So uh, it is not your intent to uh, pave it. Uh, either short term or long term at this point. That's correct. Okay, so it uh, really is a temp uh, temporary drive uh, that we have. Um, so um, I'm not I'm not aware um, of uh, from an ordinance standpoint other than what you highlighted, Mr. Uh, Valentine. That uh, obviously, if it's a permanent. Uh, that uh, we do something to make sure that uh, there is no damage to our curb line and uh, some things like that. And um, uh, and again, the applicant uh, homeowner is looking to do this uh, short term. Um, you know, I'm thinking uh, without uh, having given a lot of thought or chatting with the town attorney, I'm thinking some type of a temporary measure uh, that uh, we might look to provide to the homeowner and uh, you know with a caveat that if there were any damage done to the to the gutter that uh, there would be uh, it would be his responsibility to address that but if it's a small trailer and he's using that uh, to clear the property 
my guess is is that uh, that's probably not going to be a major issue. Yeah, and the only I other think thing the trailer is five by eight. Okay. Yeah, the only other thing would be you know tracking mud onto the road or you know sure it sounds like he's using mulch to try to stabilize that. St I was going to say <laughs> whether that, the so. board wanted to consider a some sort of sunset clause. I know he said five years, but um, obviously if it became an issue, code enforcement could bring it back before the board at any time. If it right. you know started to become an issue or became a major access point or there was something else going on, obviously code enforcement could bring it back before this board to sure. Sure. rescind that temporary, you know, if you want to say it's a, you know, a temporary access agreement or temporary curb cut. Um, which is, I think we should document that somewhere. So no, I, I, I think we Mr. memorialize Dwayne's out two years from now or 10 years from now, a future homeowner doesn't believe that's a, you know, a permanent or a, a formal curb cut location. So I think what I I think what I'd like to uh, to do is um, uh, go. I, I I would recommend that we might go in that direction to do something temporary. I think uh, if you could give us the opportunity, Mr. Valentine, Mr. Costello, myself, to uh, chat with the town attorney, and uh, you know carry it over for two weeks. Uh, during that time, uh, he can continue to do what he's doing. Uh, and then we'll memorialize it uh, in two weeks so that uh, we've got that. We can stay in contact uh, with the property owner uh, and uh, make sure he's aware of, you know, what we're looking uh, to do, again, from uh, the town attorney's standpoint. So if, if folks are comfortable with yeah, that, I would, uh, I would make a motion to hold this for two weeks, uh, craft a, a response back uh, in a temporary permit mode uh, for the applicant to be able to continue clearing out his uh, property and then uh, from there uh, at least uh, have that memorialized back uh, with the board and then uh, that way any questions issues that come up um, you know with anybody in the neighborhood uh, they've got that information to see what uh, has been approved by the board so do you want it held or tabled? well a table uh, so thank you uh, be more of a table than we would uh, uh, just uh, bring it back in two weeks as uh, maybe our first uh, uh, action item on the agenda okay. so that uh, the applicant wouldn't uh, have to uh, be on the line for uh, several hours. So, okay, so I've made that motion to, uh, to table. Is there a second to that? I'll second it. Seconded by Councilperson Draw. Uh, we'll put that together. We'll stay in contact uh, with you and then uh, we'll finalize that uh, in two weeks. Thank you very much. I appreciate All right. that. Yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you for being patient uh, with our lengthy agenda. Mm -hmm. And we'll look forward to uh, chatting with you in two weeks. Bye. Great. Thank you. Be well, be safe. Okay. Uh, this brings us to our information items. Uh, we have one information item uh, this evening. Uh, this is a follow up from uh, two weeks ago. Uh, this is an update of the uh, Little League softball facility improvements at Veterans Memorial Park. And um, I know we asked uh, staff, uh, specifically Mark Valentine, Mike O'Connor, uh, to put some, uh, at least some initial information together for us. And uh, they have done that. I, I think I'll just provide the caveat that, uh, you know, this is a draft. Um, we've tried to dot as many I's uh, as we can and cross as many T's, uh, but in no way is it uh, finalize especially you know with the cost and things like that so with that mark i'll ask that uh, maybe you kind of run us down through uh what sure. you're looking at by field layout and then uh the next uh, item which uh, will be a bigger item to deal with yeah um so this is uh based off the petition that the board had received uh obviously we've got uh, two existing softball fields one uh, element of it is adding uh, an outfield at 200 feet uh, for these two existing fields, so that incorporates some of the cost. Construction of a new softball field with uh, dugouts, fencing, similar, again, with the outfield line, and I think those are, are necessary in this location just due to the proximity between these fields to make sure they're safe and, and properly separated. Um, locating this field, we had to push it back a little bit, um, which did uh, necessitate relocating some of these pathways. Uh, we also incorporated some funds for revegetation if need be 
uh, providing a, a buffer back to the, the existing neighbor. <coughs> Included, as we were looking at initially, was a sidewalk coming off uh, Jackson Road, running down Columbus Crossing, uh, continuing up uh, to the town hall parking lot, and then connecting to the north to an existing pathway. While doing that, installing that, that sidewalk, uh, I've noted that during the summer months, uh, the need and amount of parking that's necessary for at least the two tournaments and often softball that's going on, people park down Columbus Crossing, observe the need to expand the existing parking lot that's there. So this shows the existing lot. I think it gets a little bit underused. People, I think, have concern there's only a one way in, one way out to make it stuck. Uh, so looked at expanding that parking lot and having a second access to that and then also incorporating the uh, bathroom. So this is the size and square footage of uh, what I believe is done in Channing Philbrook Park. Um, but we use the square foot cost number for what we've most recently looked at for LaSalle's Landing. Uh, we've gone out for some uh, grant funding there, so we use the same per square foot cost uh, as what that one was. So incorporating uh, up <coughs> upgraded fencing for the two fields, the new softball field, uh, the uh, relocated path, installation of the sidewalk, expansion of the parking lot, and then adding the new bathroom. And then with the new bathroom, obviously, we'd have to make connections to sanitary sewer, bring water in. You'll have to have a backflow preventer, uh, other elements with that electricity. So with all that, um, my apologies for sending this out a little later today. We were waiting to get quotes in on the fencing. We were waiting to get some other uh, sure. items in. So I held off a little bit on that. Uh, we did incorporate the cost of the, the sanitary sewer lateral, uh, the connection to the existing manhole, the water service. Uh, so that is just a little over uh, $8,600 for the utility elements. Getting into the overall construction, earthwork, stripping the topsoil, uh, clearing and grubbing the, you know, the existing trees that are out there, stockpiling the topsoil, and then just rough grading the, the actual field. It's just over 22000 then we get into the construction of the sidewalk. So the sidewalk uh, is uh, 45,000. We relocating the as asphalt path, 5,000. Striping the crosswalk or putting a crosswalk in as you cross over Columbus Crossing. Adding the stone parking lot, so boxing that out, removing the material, uh, bringing in the stone for that. Uh, adding the, the necessary uh, handicap ramps at the end. Um, and then putting some protective bollards in along that way as needed, whether those are, are wooden. We've got some wooden stakes out there now that kind of delineate the parking lot. We kind of look to, to extend those. Uh, that takes us, uh, that uh, section is just over 84,000. As we said, adding some supplemental trees. We took a guesstimate at 10, you know, to backfill some of that area that's cleared. Uh, just under 2,000. And then we get into some more of the costs, and these are still a little bit of the, the unknown, uh, but the bathroom, uh, just under 200,000. Existing ball field fencing, this is adding the two outfield fencing, um, and uh, would be, so two of them at $90,000 a piece is 180. Ball field construction, including dugouts, fencing, backstop, new outfield fencing, about 200,000, and then obviously, mobilization and then we've got a contingency in there so uh, not a, a, a cheap project uh, but there's a lot of a lot of elements in there um, a lot of different pieces you know this board has already talked about going ahead with the sidewalk but then subsequent to that got the petition so we've you know tried to provide some feedback to that so <laughs> have some stars on these we are still waiting you know between two weeks ago and today we did reach out to those companies Ask for that. I've been working with Timmy Masterton and the Parks Department on what their approximate costs are. So we've kind of tried to put some conservative numbers in there. Um, you know, hopefully we could get something that's you know tighter than that. But just want to make sure that at least we're in the right ballpark for okay for the board on on that estimate. So the bottom bottom line right now about three quarters of a million dollars, um, and. Uh, Again, uh, those numbers could be tightened up a little bit, but uh, I mean, even if we were to tighten them up uh, significantly, it, it's still sounding like a seven hundred plus thousand dollar project. I think as we're looking right now, I know we know that uh, construction costs are are high. Um, you know, we've gone out to bid on a couple of things, and I think everybody's very busy right now. Um, so again, it, it, 
probably depends on timing. We've got a conceptual layout here. You know, if the board wanted to move ahead, you know, we need to get into much more detail on design of bathroom, the layout, you know, the ball field, and you know, work with the parks department, you know, closely on that, and could you know continue to refine that number. Okay. So, board, this is before us for uh, tonight. Uh, information. So, this is the first opportunity to see uh, the roll-up uh, cost uh, of this. Um, I would not expect that uh, that we would uh, make any decisions at this uh, at this meeting, uh, but I would uh, suggest that we encourage staff to, you know, continue to work uh, the numbers and uh, tighten those up as uh, much as we can. Then I think one of the things that uh, we, you know, have to talk about uh, is is that uh, is this something that we phase in over a couple of seasons? Um, you know, um, how do we how do we appropriately fund that? Uh, we just don't have uh, three quarters of a million dollars just sitting uh, with uh, no place to use it. Uh, so uh, we'll have to at least have some conversations. It is we are going through the budget process now, so. From a timing standpoint, this is a good opportunity to take a look at uh, what uh, some of the options uh, might be uh, as we look to move forward. So, I'm going to ask I'm going to ask staff that we keep this um, on the agenda. Uh, I'll ask uh, Mark and uh, Mike uh, to continue to uh, work the numbers and tighten uh, things up, and uh, we'll um, you know see what uh, what some of our options might be as we. Uh, continue to work on the 2022 budget. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Supervisor, real quick, I, I want to thank you for your leadership in, in keeping this process moving forward. Um, I certainly think it's important to take a look at these dollar amounts and to let the public know what dollars, you know, that we're looking at. The numbers are, are quite higher than I thought they were, but, you know, it is what it is, I guess. Um, you and I talked briefly right before the meeting about you know, the potential for phasing in um, elements of this based on some priorities. And I think you just articulated um, your desire to take a look at that. So I just want to support that and just to reiterate that um, if we could look at phasing and look at some of the priorities, you know, such I think we can universally <coughs> say that the restroom would be one of the top priorities, you know, and then take a look at um, some of the other elements, you know, the, the safety features, obviously, with parking would be a top priority and, um, you know, kind of look at it from that perspective at, at this point. But I do want to thank you for your leadership in, in moving us forward to where we are today and a continuation um, as we move through August, September, October, and November, and so forth. So thank you. Okay. Or another, other thoughts, comments? this point I agree. we'll uh, we'll continue to uh, tighten up uh, the numbers uh, take a look at uh, any areas uh, that uh, we might be able to um, uh, manage uh, better differently uh, maybe uh, working with staff we can maybe uh, break it up into a couple of components uh, and bring that back in two weeks get a sense of uh, what that might look like and then talk about uh, how we, you know, potentially advance this uh, to some next stages. Okay. All right. Um, so we'll keep it on the agenda and uh, we'll revisit that. Uh, so thank you, Mark, and especially Mike, uh, Mike O'Connor for that. I know Mike's put a lot of work in that. Uh, so uh, thank you on behalf of the board uh, to Mike for that. Okay, uh, the uh, seeing no further business to come before the August 11th, uh, 2021 uh, work session of the Penfield Town Board. Uh, this meeting will stand adjourned at uh, 9.19 p.m. Thank you to everyone that participated. Thank you to Penfield TV. Have a great evening. Be well. Be safe.